Hello friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks. Thank you so much for joining me. In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to hook up this zest wrench machine adapter and I'm going to demonstrate it for you. I'm going to demonstrate it in circular mode, but I will teach you how to do the panel mode as well just by way of explanation. You're going to want to watch this entire video and not skip over because I will give you several tips that I think you're going to need to know in order to make this a successful um, thing for your machines. Now, I would never promote anything unless I was 100% sure of it. And um, I will tell you what my thoughts are as we go throughout the video. And then I give you final thoughts at the end of the video as well. But you're going to want to listen to all the tips as we go throughout this video so that you can make a... Um, a very wise decision for yourself as to whether or not you will uh, purchase one of these and use it for your machine. So thanks again for joining me. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and come on over and join my Facebook group if you haven't done so already. Friends, always be sure to click on the description below this video um, where you will uh, find the links to some of the products that I have here. And also, I have a special note for you in under every video. So I'd appreciate you always checking that as well. So thanks again for joining me. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. All right, so I have taken it out of the box, all the parts. I figured you didn't need to see me opening the bag in the box and blah, blah, blah. So <laughs> it comes in this nice sturdy box. So it's nice, nice and well protected. And I always make sure that when I get a product in that I check to make sure that the box isn't damaged. I don't want somebody else to have opened it and to be played with it and decided they didn't like it and send it back. I want, if I'm gonna pay the money for it, I want a brand new one. So this box came um, in perfect condition so I know this was never opened. And I could tell by, by it when I when I opened the actual box. Here we have our zest wrench piece, the, the knitting machine adapter, and it's fairly sturdy. It's very nice actually. I'm impressed with the construction of it. It seems very solid. And here's the handle came with screws, the power plug, and a screwdriver. So what I'm gonna do, because I've already, I've already read up on it to um, show you what we need to do. I'm gonna set that aside. We're going to take our machine, and this screwdriver will fit in here too, I'm sure. It says to peel off the sticker, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to puncture a hole in there, which I had already done because I've taken this handle off before. And we're going to hold your handle firmly in place while you unscrew it. If you have it tipped, not, tipped on its side like this, oh my gosh, it's not, it's not magnetic. <laughs> if you have it tipped on its side like this, don't push down too far. You'll break your legs on the other that are leaning against the table. It's at a funny angle. Now that you have that off, I'm going to pick up that screw. And what we're going to do next is we're going to make sure that these little notches on the side where our handle was, we're going to make sure that they're horizontal like that from each other. So you don't want them vertical, you don't want them sideways, you want them horizontal. All you gotta do is put your hand on the inside of your barrel here and just gradually push it and put those two notches so that they are exactly horizontal. Then you're gonna take your handle, because if you take your zest wrench uh, adapter and you look at the back, you want these to be completely horizontal as well. So just take your handle, the gold handle, and you see those notches there and you see the notches on there, fit it together. We're not gonna screw it together, but we're just gonna fit it together just like that so that we can go ahead and turn this and make it horizontal, just like that. Then you can go, you can leave that on there if you like. Pick this up and you just pop it on just like that, it's so very easy. You're gonna go ahead and you're going to take the screw that they gave you, which you can have it ready. I didn't have mine ready, but I will just get it really quickly. There's a couple extra ones in there for you as well. You're gonna take one of them. Well, there's one extra, but that's for when you put your regular handle on, I think. We're gonna carefully hold that up, pop that into there, and we're going to screw it down. Being very careful, I don't want to damage anything, so I'm turning it very gently. I can feel it gripped. And there we go. I'm not going to turn it too tight, just enough. And there we go. We've got our piece connected. Looks beautiful. I'm now going to grab my power plug, which I took a 
the little twist tie off and straightened out the cord a little bit for you. And we're going to plug that, or for me, but save you the time of doing that. I'm going to plug that into the wall. I'm going to take this other end. When you put this on its side, you'll see that your plug is on the bottom left. Put that in there, push it in. Now we're gonna see how the magic happens. I wanna show you on the side here first. You can see that. This button is what gets it going. And <laughs> you wanna make sure that your toggle on your machine is in the same uh, mode as this. So I want it in circular knitting and you can see circular knitting there. I can change that by this PC button, this panel and circular knitting. If you press it, it toggles up to plain knitting. Then you would have to put that there and that's panel. Okay, I'm gonna keep it in circular. Move that back down to circular. That toggle there is where and where it's white is circular knitting. The speed now is on low. To change the speed, you have a speed button. You just have to hit it and it goes to high. I'm gonna keep it on low. And then when we press this button, it's going to turn on. Here's the reset button and I'm going to cast on, then I'm gonna hit my reset button so that this number is going to line up with the number that's on my, my actual machine. I don't need to actually even pay attention to the number on here, um, but I'm going to just to see if it if it uh, stays consistent with my machine here. Before we move on, one thing I forgot to show you was this button here. This is for when you, it's in panel mode. You, you set this to P, which is, it says plain knitting on here, and then you have to move your toggle up to panel mode there, and then it'll go one direction when you have it up on the plus sign there, then when it goes around, it stops, and then you have to manually turn that down to this other, to the minus thing here, and it goes backwards the other way. Then when it gets to the end of that row, you have to go back up, and it changes direction, then back down, and it changes direction. I very briefly tried it, and at this point, I'm gonna stick with just circular knitting. <laughs> I like the control at the end of my panels that I have with a very specific way of doing my tension that makes my edges very even. And uh, I am not gonna attempt a panel on this, with on my machine, with this machine yet. You might see a video on that in the future once I get more comfortable with it. I wanna make sure that my machine is safe <laughs> and that I'm not gonna wreck it with this um, adapter. And I feel that if I use the proper techniques to do a tube, it will be fine. But this video will not show you the panel, just so you know. All right, friends, are you ready to uh, see what happens here? We're going to bring our last white and our first black needle in line with our yarn guide. And if you are new and you haven't taken a black permanent marker to mark that red divider between those two, I would encourage you to do so. It's one of the um, most practical tips that will help you in your knitting. You always know when the end of your row is coming around. Okay, and where the beginning is. We're gonna cast on going in front of that first black, rotating that little gold handle that's on our adapter. Manually, we're gonna rotate it. We're gonna go back and forth in front and behind each needle. Letting that yarn slip through your fingers because we wanna have a nice loose cast on row. Before you get to the end, and I can see that black divider coming around, I'm gonna set my row counter to zero. I'm gonna double check to make sure my machine is in circular mode and that my adapter is in circular mode and that it's on low speed. And then I'm going to reset that one as well. So the counter on there goes to zero and we're going to continue. That way we're ready to begin. I do not count my cast on row in my knitting. That's why when I'm part of the way around, I hit my reset on that adapter as well. And I save my counter. I don't change my counter on my machine until I'm almost at the end. And then it will count when it hits these black needles. I'm gonna help that first loop down over those little red teeth. That's the only one that sometimes will stay up. We're gonna help that down. You can now turn your handle manually for this first row if you like, but I'm gonna just dive right in because I did it once already and it worked like a charm. It is on low speed. I'm gonna hit the start, but I'm gonna have my yarn through my fingers here there's no extra tension down there. It just helps me to guide the yarn and to, to make sure there's no knots coming. And I am still keeping my eye right here, watching as every loop passes by the yarn guide, making sure it goes over the little red teeth. 
Again, um, you might want to make your practice where you just manually turn the first row and then you start your counter. But I want to do it right from the beginning just for the sake of this video. And so I'm going to hit start. We're going to see what happens. It's nerve wracking, friends. Okay, so far they're all going down. There we go. I'm going to help that little loop down. I got little, I just tug this little thing down to help the loop on the first needle be better. And so far, so good. I'm watching right here. I think because the machine is choosing its speed and it's staying consistent, it's helping those loops go down over the red teeth with no problem. I'm going to shut it off. Now, you can knit a, a couple of rows by hand or using that and then add your weights, but I'm going to tell you, when you're using the adapter, um, do not use claw weights. Use a lighter weight because these are too heavy and I tried them on one tube already. I've only, done, I've only done one tube. I just opened this up this morning. And when you put this on, it gets caught under, it gets caught underneath this, the groove of this machine and against this needle or this uh, screw that's down there because um, it's just going at a consistent speed and it doesn't have time to go over that. Twice it caught. But I was glad that it did because you know what happens? You know what that showed me? I'm going to turn this on. It showed me that when there is a discrepancy, like if there was a knot that came from, from this ball or something was, was happened where it would jam up, this automatically shut off. So when that weight got caught against this screw that's down there, which it did twice, the whole, this whole adapter just shut, shut off and the machine stopped. And in doing so, it did not tug on any of my needles. It wasn't an abrupt stop. It just stopped. And I thought, well, that's brilliant because it detected that, that there was an error. And that's really been my biggest concern about having one of these things is if ever there was a knot and I missed it or something happened, um, the, the motor would keep this thing going and it would break a needle or break something. And that was my, there I tucked a stitch. So now let me just stop that train of thought. That was always my con one of my concerns. And so this other concern now is that when I'm knitting with the handle, I can see if there's going to be a tuck stitch right before it actually happens because as soon as it passes this guide, that loop that's supposed to go down over the red teeth stays up on the white needle. So then when I get it, when I see that, I can fix it right away. Now I can't fix it until it goes around once, which isn't that big of a deal, um, but still not my preference. So I gotta see where that actually was. You can see these two messed up. I'm going to grab my loom pick. And again, these are not, this video is not to teach you how to fix tuck, fix tucked stitch, stitches. <laughs> I can't say that. So I'm going to just show you what I have to do and then I'm going to fix it off camera. I'm going to bring, this is the one I'm going to fix. I'm going to bring it on the other side of my yarn guide till the one on the right drops down, wrap that around my, my counter to hold this in place. Then I'm going to fix this stitch, then I'm going to work it, then I'm going to fix this one. And if you need to know how to fix tuck stitches, go to my channel and, uh, and look for it under the techniques and techniques playlist because that's not what this video is for. I'm going to fix these two and we're going to continue on. There we go. The second one actually wasn't a tuck stitch. It was just a little split, but it fixed itself. So I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to keep going. Now, because you got a free hand and you're not turning your handle, you can, off, you can do this too. Just help pull them down over those red teeth. And how easy is that? You're just giving it a little extra help and you're not needing weights because your hand is doing that job. But I'm just going to keep going here. Now there's a little bit more weight on here from the um, projects getting longer, so I likely won't need to use weights at all or even help it because my machine loves this yarn. I'm going to do one more round and then I'm going to change it to the fast mode so you can see. I'm going to change it while it's not near the black needles. I don't want to change it while it's passing the black needles, so I'll let it pass. And then I'm going to go ahead and change the speed. That is the fast speed. I can still see those loops going down, and that's always important to me. I do not want to just let this go, walk away and go do my dishes or go do something. 
I still want to maintain control. So I can still see as each one of those are passing by, I can knit this fast with my with my hand open, like manually. So they're almost this fast. And I, I'm not tucking one stitch here, but yet I'm getting perfectly even tension because the machine is setting an even speed. You guys, I'm loving this so far, but I will have some tips for you that I think that you need to um, pay attention to. And I'm going to just slow this down again so that I can actually talk to you as I'm doing this. And we're gonna just let it run for a bit while I'm talking to you just so we can watch it and see how it works. But what I would make sure that you're doing, if you're going to use this, this uh, technique to, to run your machine, um, this assist, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're always using yarn that you know your machine loves. Do not go and buy difficult yarn because you're gonna you're gonna have tuck stitches everywhere. If you're gonna use uh, something like this, go ahead and buy the yarn that you know works. That is my first tip. Second tip: make sure you're still watching that those loops drop down over your red teeth. You don't want to fix a pile of tuck stitches that are way down once you get it off your machine. Um, there is a, a technique of doing that, and I do have a video that shows you how to fix a, fix a tuck stitch once it's off the machine. But why, why wait and do it that way? Then you're going to have funny tension all the way up that row. I like to fix my tuck stitches if I get them right away. And so this is going slow enough that I can actually, um, oops, see, I felt that. My, I was going to get a little bit of a knot there, but I was able to control that with my hand. So you're going to want to make sure, first of all, that you use yarn that's right for your machine. Second of all, do not use claw weights because they'll get stuck on the loops as this is passing around at an even speed. It doesn't have time to swing out and miss those little um, screws. Number three, make sure that you go at a slow speed until you get really, really comfortable with this machine and you know that your yarn in your machine will, will work great with the high speed. Okay, number four, only run this for 10, maximum 15 minute segments at a time. I did not feel that this gets hot at all, um, but you don't know what's going on on the inside and you wanna take care of your machine and you wanna take care of this uh, adulator or whatever you call it. <laughs> um, so make sure that, that nothing uh, burns in there. You don't want any plastic getting hot. So 10 minutes max, shut it off for, you know, for a few minutes to make sure that it, it cools down and then continue on. That's just my thing. I, I read something in the little brochure that said 10 minutes, but I don't know if it was referring to that or not. It wasn't very specific. So that's just one thing that I am going to make sure that I do. And uh, 10 or 15 minutes at the max, then shut it off for five, 10 minutes and then keep going. I'm already at row 47. I have not had a tuck stitch. That one. So friends, I think just my initial reaction to this there's the high speed. I think it's a win for me. And there's slow. Okay, friends, when your project starts to touch the table, you still want to do what you normally do, even though you're using an adapter. You still want to pick it up and roll it into a donut. Because if you let it just... Um, rest on the table, it pushes up and you could lose one of those loops off your red teeth. And by rolling it into a donut every 20 rows or so, you keep the tension tighter around the inside of your barrel. And that's going to help these loops to drop down over the red teeth as well. So there you go. This is my uh, first little um, try with this machine. Well, I mean, just before I showed you this one, I knit another one. Let me just take the little needle off of here. And it could honestly be in my head. I don't know for sure, but I feel like it's softer and I feel like the rows are even more consistent. And like, I'm, I mean, I, I knit pretty, when I'm knitting by hand, I knit at an even tension all the time. I try to do the best that I can and my rows are, are pretty straight because uh, that's how I prefer them to be. Like I, uh, it's important to me, but I think even with this adapter, I think they're even more so. Like I really think I can see a difference. So right now I say, I love it. Again, I'm not gonna attempt the panels and I probably at this point in my mind can't ever see myself using this in panel mode, um, but you never know, right? I never thought I would ever use an adapter, but I give it a thumbs up.
at this point, just from the quick um, demonstration that I've done with you and from um, just opening it up today and trying it. I, I think that I'm happy with it. This is slow speed. And another tip, I don't know if I said it when I told you the other tips, you gotta make sure you're using the right yarn. Do not use cheap yarn and an adapter. Take care of your machine, my friends. If you choose to go this route, follow the tips and have fun. Alright friends, so there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. The reason why I can give it a win status and a thumbs up as quickly as I have is because this adapter does not run at such a speed that it's going to strip your gears or break your needles if, in quotation marks, if you follow the techniques and the tips that I've given you for this. Now, I um, would never promote something if I wasn't 100% confident that uh, it it was something that was going to be safe for your machine because I don't want to wreck my machine either. But if I use it, especially on the slower speed, and I use it with yarn that works in my machine, and if I um, just follow all the, the techniques that I, I laid out in this video, I think, in my personal opinion, and it's my opinion only, you have to make the decision for yourself. I believe it's safe for our machines and I'm, I'm happy I purchased it. So thanks again for joining me, friends. I hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. Please don't forget to check the description box below and uh, read the notes that I have there for you. And come on over and join my Facebook group if you haven't done so already. I would sure love to have you as a part of that community. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Take care and have a blessed day.